This is the Toyota Mirai, a hydrogen-powered car that was supposed to be the feature of the automobile, but that didn't really happen. With hydrogen fuel becoming more expensive and stations becoming more sparse, customers are furious. They've even threatened to sue Toyota, and hydrogen fuel car sales are down nearly 70% from last year. How has it come to this? Well, today we're gonna find out how this car works, what it's like to live with one. That is a honker. That's a honker. And decide if this is the car of the future or if it should be left in the past. Welcome to Donut. All right, so first let's talk about what this car even is. Well, hydrogen powered engines have been in the works since the 1800s. It wasn't until 2014 that Toyota first unveiled the Mirai to the world. Mirai literally means future in Japanese, and it's easy to see why they called it that. It's the first ever mass-produced hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. This technology creates zero toxic emissions, just pure, clean water. I mean, it's a car that pees out of the butt. US, you can only buy the Mirai in California, and in 2023, less than 3,000 were sold here. One reason for that is because of the unique fueling technology, which we'll get to in a bit. But first, let's talk a all right, so this is the Toyota Mirai right here out of the daylight. It reminds me of a Toyota Camry a lot. Very Camry-esque. This is Zachary Deal. You might have seen him in the Cybertruck video. He's going to be with me driving this car today. Let's get into the aesthetics of this thing. I've always thought the second gen Mirai looks like a deep water fish. The high price of this car might have something to do with how many sensors are on this thing. I've been driving this for the past couple days. It's constantly telling me what's going on, on the road. I feel very safe in it, in fact. There's cameras in the fenders that warn you for cross traffic when you're pulling out of uh, parking lots or onto streets and stuff. It's pretty neat. This thing is a jam-packed vehicle full of technology, and it also has a really cool heads-up display. I like a heads-up display. I like that a lot. I had to introduce that new JBL speaker, the new Tacomas, but I like the heads-up display better. Yeah. I just never really liked the big sort of functional grill here. I think with this car being black, it wears it well because it all is just the same color. Yeah, but exactly. when you see the blue ones or white ones of these, I'm just like, it looks a little bad. Well, let's start working our way around here. From the side, pretty good large sedan, I would say. The wheels look very aerodynamic. The spokes are quite large. Quite large, yeah. It looks like a very multi-spoke design. I want to see what's under the hood of this thing because I'm super curious. It's got a hood release just like every other Toyota, pretty much. Whoa. Oh. I was actually expecting nothing, but there actually is a fuel cell in the fuel cell vehicle. I'll be honest, the amount of orange wires in here is frankly alarming. I mean, you're not going to be working on this thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People say the same thing about EVs, like, how are you going to work on them yourself? I think that's a valid concern. And when you add in extremely high-tech components like an actual fuel cell to the equation, I'm not going to work on that. I'm not going to do that. No, I don't know what's I mean, going on. All right, let's take a look at the inside real quick. On the inside, not too crazy. It has Apple CarPlay and everything. It does. Pretty standard Toyota fare, I think. It's very comfortable. It's yeah. not too crazy in your face. I actually like it, too. And I was going to say, there's not, like, a ton of buttons in here. Climate control you got down here. Buttons for the volume control, which is kind of weird, honestly. Prius-style shifter. If you've driven a Prius before, you know how the shifter works. It's not quite to Lexus levels, I would say, uh -huh. but it's pretty nice. Overall, what do we think? Exterior, keep it or leave it in the past? Leave it in the past. I, I agree. I think it needs a little restyling. Interior, though, pretty nice. Watching Donut, huh? Well, well, well. What do we have here? Whoa! Hello! Wait till I show you everyone. Looks like I arrived just in time. Good thing you have today's sponsor, Surfshark. It's the go-to VPN that encrypts your internet data, keeping your sensitive information safe from hackers. So you can look at all the hot cars you want. No judgment here, man. Stream your favorite show, shop online, and bank securely no matter where you are. With one account, you can protect all your devices simultaneously, all for one price. You can choose from thousands of servers worldwide for super fast speeds and access geo-blocked content. If you want to keep your online browsing and YouTube watching to yourself, secure your privacy with Surfshark. Try it out right now with a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. Enter promo code DONUTMEDIA for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals slash DONUTMEDIA. That's Let's go Donut Media to get three extra months of protection for free. So how the heck does this thing move around using hydrogen anyway? 
Well, to answer that question, I've got just the guy for the job. Jerry the Science Dude. So how do we get this puppy moving? Well, to kick things off, you'll need hydrogen. And you're in luck because it just so happens to be the most abundant element in the universe. Also, it's highly flammable. But the Mirai doesn't ignite its fuel with a spark plug like an internal combustion engine would. In fact, it kind of does something a lot cooler. It turns it into water. <laughs> The second generation Mirai, like the one we have, stores up to 5.6 kilograms, that's 12.35 pounds, of hydrogen between three carbon fiber fuel tanks at a super high pressure of 10,000 PSI. When you press the accelerator, hydrogen from the fuel tanks and oxygen from the intake are sent on a collision course straight to the fuel cell. And it's there where the magic happens. But what is a fuel cell? Well, put very simply, it's two plates separated by a sort of filter. Air and hydrogen enter the fuel cell on opposite sides. Hydrogen in pairs as H2 into one plate and air into the other. Inside the hydrogen plate is a platinum catalyst. And what that does is strip the electron from the hydrogen atom. The protons are then drawn towards the oxygen in the air on the other side of the cell. To get there, they pass through something called a proton exchange membrane. That's the filter we mentioned earlier which keeps the electrons out. And this is the most important part because these electrons are what power the car. As the hydrogen protons travel towards the oxygen, the electrons, they're left behind and are forced out and sent to the PCU the power control unit as electrical current, which distributes power to the electric motor and drives the wheel. If the PCU receives more energy than it needs, it sends the excess to a battery so you can use it later. Very, very cool. So the electrons help power the car, but what happened to those hydrogen atoms? The hydrogen meets up with its buddy, oxygen, to form water. And that's the stuff getting leaked out all over the L.A. streets. Oh, that's real nice. Mariah P, I call it. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> that's not water. So how much power does this create exactly? Well, not much. Less than one volt gets produced from one of these fuel cells. But the Mirai doesn't just have one fuel cell. Oh no, it actually has 320 separate fuel cell layers combined into something called a fuel cell stack. And that gives us enough power to make 182 electric ponies. This might sound really inefficient, but it's actually way more efficient than an internal combustion engine. The Mirai's fuel cell stack operates at over 60% efficiency compared to 30 to 40% of our modern ICE. Is this the future? Well, it could be, but currently there's way more investment in EV technology, which can operate up to 90% efficiency. Science rules. Chew, 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 chew. Jerry the science dude. Feel the power of hydrogen, deal. Oh. <laughs> I will say, on the street, this is a great car. Well, I am sitting passenger princess, so yeah. I mean, I don't really have like a good impression of it at first. I can't really figure out what to do with my legs. Foot placement here is like, uh, maybe it's because... <laughs> maybe a, oh, you can adjust your seat if you want. That's... No, this is as far back as oh, far really? it goes, yeah. No kidding. And I'm touching the ceiling if I sit Here's up straight. Yeah. The car itself actually does feel kind of big, but the inside feels very small. It feels pretty small. I just think that's a byproduct of having a hydrogen tank right under us here, yeah. and the fuel cell in front of us, and more tanks behind us. There's just not going to be a ton of space in here. Yeah, it's the sound is weird. Ooh. I think that's fake, but oh. maybe not. To describe it, it sort of sounds like if you were being transported up into a UFO. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. It's the same yes. sound you would hear. Yeah. 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 This is a great car trap. Even though it's pretty long, it doesn't feel big. Probably because I'm low to the ground. And I've got really great visibility out the front. I can see everything that's going on right now. So, this is a 2023 limited trim Mariah. It's got a modest 182 horsepower. 300 foot power of the torque. Not bad. I can go 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds. Now that we know how this thing works, let's get into the biggest difference between this and any other car on the road, which is refueling. First, how far can you get on a tank of hydrogen? Uh, Toyota says pretty freaking far, but 
Customers say otherwise. Toyota claims that the Mirai gets between 357 and 402 miles of range. It's pretty good. That's twice my car. And it's much higher than your average EV, which only gets about 250 miles on one charge. Mirai sounds like a pretty sweet deal, if that figure is actually true. There are currently 48 fueling stations in the state of California, mostly clustered in the San Fran and LA areas. Now, that might not sound too bad, but to put that into perspective, there are over 10,000 regular gas stations in the state. All right, so here's a little app that shows all the hydrogen stations in SoCal. We are located in Inglewood, California. Now, the nearest one to us is right near LAX, but you can see the icon there is red. It's got only, oh, it's closed. It doesn't have any fuel, just closed. So uh, that's not gonna work. What about this one over here in Marina Del Rey? It's offline and only has five kilograms of fuel available at their facility. Yeah. Not very convenient. You'll see uh, similar to these other stations that are close to us. This guy right here, it's limited, two kilograms. And not only are there not very many hydrogen stations to choose from, but many of them are broken or could be out of hydrogen on any given day. And what's worse is that you could drive a long way to get to a station that the app says is working, wasting a good amount of your precious fuel in the process, and then it could be closed anyway. Or there might be a massive line, or the guy who got there just before you had the pump freeze to his car. Yes, that is a thing that can happen. Now, refueling seems like a nightmare and is one of the biggest problems that the Mirai is currently facing. So with all that being said, let's go take a chance on one of these pumps and see how it's done. We're waiting. There's only one thing here. That could be seen as a failure having long wait times here. But dude, when gas stations were first introduced, I'm sure there's only like one in town you had to wait. Remember how long it took to get a PS5? I mean, it sucks. I'm sure living with it would also suck and having to wait sometimes, like in the real world. Yeah, that that is a major inconvenience. Let's pull in here before someone else takes it. Whoa, what is that? Did I take that off? Oh, oh, okay. Exciting. Yeah, that's... What is that? It's like an air chuck. Yeah, it's like a big old air chuck. Connect nozzle to vehicle. Press onto car. Ooh, that's coal. That's a coal. Holy smokes. That is a honker. That's a honker. Press. There we go. Dude, it is like a big old air chuck. That's cool. So, press H70. Now it's filling. We actually didn't use too much hydrogen the past couple days. It's an efficient vehicle, so it has a nearly full tank. So we actually would have to find a high pressure pump. There's actually two different kinds of pumps. There's a lower pressure one and a high pressure one. If you want to get a full tank, you have to go to a high pressure one because as the tanks fill, more pressure builds up. Let's say we're like three quarter tank and above. If we went to a low pressure one, we wouldn't be able to fill up more because the pressure in the tanks would override the pressure in the pump itself. That's interesting. I also noticed this is measured in kilograms, which yes. is kind of interesting because like obviously everything else is measured in gallons when you come to a gas station. So we got nearly a kilogram, one kilogram of hydrogen fuel, $27. Now, $27.70 to be exact. Nice and cold, feel that. The chuck cold? Oh, that's ice cold. Is it? Is it possible that this freezes to this if it gets cold? That is possible. That is something that Toyota says can happen. I don't know. That was uh, pretty cool. It's same, same, but different. It feels very secure, though. It's like when you go to Europe and the plugs are different. You're like, why does it look like that? It's yeah. doing the same thing. All right, deal. Are we leaving the fueling process in the past, or do you feel like it's the future? I feel like it's kind of the future. It was super simple. You know, obviously, inconveniences aside, that was just like filling up the car. While the Mirai is green and only emits water from the tailpipe, we still need to address something that I feel is pretty overlooked. The environmental impact of getting that hydrogen gas to the pump in the first place. Jerry, take it away. Jerry the science dude. All right, so despite being so common, hydrogen is usually combined with other elements when found in nature, like oxygen, to form water. So hydrogen gas has to be produced. Like electricity, the cleanliness of hydrogen depends on how it was sourced. And there are essentially three different tiers of hydrogen gas production. Each one is made a different way and is better or worse for their environment. There are gray, blue, and green. Gray hydrogen is the easiest and cheapest way to make hydrogen. It's made by burning fossil fuels, like coal, and it creates a bunch of carbon monoxide in the process. Now, I know what you might be thinking, and you might be thinking, that doesn't sound very good for the environment. Well, 
You'd be right. While the total emissions are lower than those made by fossil fuel production, it's not by much. And it almost negates the whole clean energy that the Mirai is trying to achieve. And to make things worse, most hydrogen produced right now is gray hydrogen. Blue hydrogen is also produced by messing around with fossil fuels. It's a little cleaner because the carbon emissions are captured and stored underground. But it's expensive, it's impractical, and it's not very commonly used. But lastly, we have green hydrogen, the best hydrogen. This type is made by splitting water molecules with electricity in a process called electrolysis. So here I have a power supply with two leads next to some stainless steel hardware sitting in a salt solution of water. Now when I apply some current, through that water, I get a little bubbles forming. That electricity is splitting the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. And that one that's got a lot of bubbles, that's hydrogen. Now imagine if I were to replace this power source with say a solar panel. I could essentially get free hydrogen production. All I would need would be the sun and some water. Hooray! The problem is it's very expensive, but luckily the cost is coming down, albeit slowly. Does Jerry the science guy think hydrogen is the way of the future? Well. I think it could be. You have a lot of sun that's for free and you got a lot of water that's also for free. If you can get solar panels that are efficient enough, you can make green hydrogen production a really sustainable thing. And if you can get engineers to produce cool engines that can run on hydrogen, you get the best of both worlds. Jerry the science dude. So the last couple days that I've had with the Mirai have been a pretty interesting experience, but you might be wondering, what do people who actually pay money for these cars think? To put it mildly, people are happy. Besides difficulties with refueling, consumers are finding that the Mirai doesn't get even close to as good of a range as Toyota advertised. Instead of 400 miles on a tank of hydrogen, many people are claiming to only be getting around 280. This has led many to ask Toyota to buy back their vehicles, and some are even looking to sue Toyota for misleading them. Not a great look for your new futuristic technology. Another problem people have is the price. The Mirai is not a cheap vehicle. The base price is over $51,000, and the higher trim limited edition costs an eye-watering $67,000. For sixty-seven grand, you could get a nice M340i. Now, there's a lot of options out there for the $67,000 mark that all drawbacks considered with the Mirai, I would probably choose over this car. The hydrogen gas is also very pricey. A full tank of this stuff could cost you around 200 buckaroos. And as we've discussed, the tank will probably not get you as far as a cheaper tank of gasoline. And it's substantially more expensive to run a Mirai than just a pure EV. Not great. One of the reasons the cost is staying so high for these cars is the lack of mass adoption. Toyota has described this as a chicken or the egg scenario. It's a common problem that new technologies face. Consumers aren't buying the Mirai because there are so few fueling stations that they can use. However, no one is making more fueling stations because so few people own these cars. It's a difficult problem and one that likely won't be solved without major government subsidies and development. Luckily, there's never been a company that takes advantage of government subsidies. And one way Toyota is trying to combat this is by offering sane purchase incentives. They recently announced a $22,000 incentive for the base model and a $40,000 incentive for the limited edition. That's this one right here. That's a 60% discount. They've also started giving new buyers a $15,000 fuel card, which is supposedly supposed to pay for 30,000 miles of range. But we don't know if that actually covers 30,000 miles of range. I mean, 15 grand in fuel still pretty good. I'd like so to take that. Gas car. I, I wouldn't kick that out of my <laughs> tank. But at the end of the day, the people buying these hydrogen vehicles aren't necessarily trying to find the cheapest car possible. They're trying to be on the cutting edge, to be among the first to adopt what could very well be the next big thing in the automotive industry. Perhaps one day, green hydrogen will be easier and cheaper to produce, hydrogen fuel stations will be more abundant, and all this discussion will be put to bed. But until then, the Mirai will continue to be the subject of debate for likely years to come. All right, Deal, here's my question. Is this the future of cars or should it be left in the past? I don't know. I don't really think this is quite the future because I don't know if we can have the infrastructure to support this in the future. In the short term, at least. I think this is a great car. I had a lovely time driving it. Very comfortable. Great job, Toyota. But if the idea fails, it's not the car's fault. It's the lack of infrastructure's fault. So 